What's up gamers, Dreamcast Guy here, talking today about the Avengers, because this project seems like it's going to be such a dumpster fire. But today, we're going to be talking specifically about some new downloadable content that's just been leaked that seems like it's going to be very, very bad, just in general. Now this weekend, I have finally had a chance to play the Avengers game for myself. They had a closed beta, and I did an impressions video on it. In general, the game doesn't play super good. It does have a bunch of different heroes, but it doesn't seem like it's going to be something that's super spectacular. It's something that seems like people are going to be logging in to do the daily quests and to unlock new skins and stuff, but it's not going to be the thrilling adventure with a great story that we hoped. Now, when I was playing the beta, one of the things that really struck me was the fact that even in this pre-release version of the game, there is a lot of skins. There is a lot of, like, cosmetics. And the developers have straight up said that this is going to be how they plan on monetizing content. You are going to be paying $60 for the game itself, but if you want all the really cool stuff, you're going to need to buy cash-only microtransactions. Cosmetics that won't affect the game itself, but still seem a little bit shady. Now, after they released this statement, people were, of course, baffled about how they're talking about, you know, microtransactions and DLC before the game is even released. But now things have begun to slip out. Um, because of this deal, they're already working on so many different styles of marketing this game, and people have started to accidentally release new things about the microtransactions and the downloadable content before it's even out. Now, here we go. Look at this. Marvel Avengers first skins are beginning to leak, uh, uh, and they're so bad. Marvel Avengers has exclusive content locked for specific phone providers. Yes, that's right. Depending on which cell phone carrier you have, which internet you're using, congratulations, you're going to get skins that nobody else is going to have access to. Just last week, Square Enix announced that Spider-Man would be coming to Marvel Avengers exclusively for the PS4. While many didn't take kindly to that news, it would seem that Square Enix is in fact not done with locking content behind a platform as it's been revealed today that a set of skins are now being locked behind specific cell phone carrier. The new comes from J-Shock. Now, this is it, and you can actually see there are pictures of how you unlock this. And it's literally the fact that you're going to log in and go into your service provider and you're going to get access to these skins. Now, there's two things we have to address. First of all, these skins look awful. I mean, I don't think there's another way to say it. The fact that this is a Verizon exclusive skin and it's so generic is bizarre to me. But that's not all. People have actually managed to uncover a separate one, which is, this is the Verizon and Virgin Mobile. There's also one that's with Intel. So here's the collaboration of Intel. Oh my gosh. Now, here's part of my problem. These are clearly good skins. These ones right here, I think we can objectively say the fact that Kamala Khan is in purple looks cool. This is classic Iron Man, but in like a rustic chimera red that's like a mix of his current costume and his ancient costume. This is actually pretty legit, and I'm never going to have access to this. A and it's not just jealousy. I'm annoyed about the fact that I've already paid $60 for this game. I have it digitally pre-ordered because I plan on reviewing it. It's annoying to me when, no matter how many hundreds of hours I spend in this game, no matter how many side quests I do, achievements I unlock, no matter the amount of quests I do with friends, I will never, ever, ever have access to this. And this isn't over. People are actually already discovering other weird skins like this. If you buy Marvel Avengers 5 gum, which has just been discovered at Walmart, you get to unlock this fancy costume. So you're going to have like almost a more bluish tint. Every pack unlocks in-game content details inside. Now, let's just talk about this real quick. Let's go into the business. This exists for a very specific reason, which is that I guarantee you they don't care about how good this game is. It's basically just a billboard at this point. 
The only reason they're putting this stuff in here is not to try and improve the experience, not to try and make the gameplay more fun, it's flat out because they can get those marketing deals. A lot of times these people, like the Five Gum, Verizon Wireless, they're actually paying Marvel to do this. They're actually saying, hey, if you put an exclusive skin for us, we'll pay you $700,000 or whatever. Because now people are going to have to, if you want these skins, you have to go to their particular cell phone provider or buy their crappy gum. This exists to monetize you in real life. And additionally, let's just talk about this. If for some reason this game does take off, let's just like imagine here for a second, what if the Marvel Avengers game completely explodes? What if it really does manage to sell like 20 million copies? I don't think it will. I actually think it's going to have some pretty bad problems with sales a couple weeks after launch. But let's just imagine that it does sell that much, and it lives for years and years to come. Say that in the future, people are still playing Marvel Avengers in 2022. Well, what happens then? Does this downloadable content cease to exist? Do people have costumes that nobody else can play with? Are they going to sell them separately later? The developers have been pretty clear about the fact that the point of this project is the microtransactions. They won't technically be loot crates and they won't actually affect combat. These aren't going to be like power boosters, or so they claim. But even still, they're clearly more worried about getting you to buy everything that's Avengers branded instead of just playing and loving the game. And instantly, this actually reminds me of a problem we had six years ago with the original Watch Dogs. Now, if you're a newer gamer, maybe you don't realize this happened, but there was actually a really big issue with the fact that this is an official chart that somebody had to compile for if you wanted to try and get everything in the game itself. Now, Watch Dogs was very hotly anticipated at the time. People were practically counting the days until it came out. And so somebody was trying to figure out what happens if I want everything? What if I want all the single additional contents? What if I want like all the DLC? What do I have to do to try and get the skins, the soundtrack, all the cool stuff like the cap? What do I have to do for that? It's impossible. Look at this. If you get, there's ways to get the game disc, there's ways to get the downloadable content, there's ways to get stuff, but because of all this exclusive branding, it was impossible to actually own everything in the original Watch Dogs. Somebody calculated that if you were going to try and get each of the specific different styles of special edition, it would cost you about $1,000 to experience everything in Watch Dogs 1. To me, this is evil. It's more than just bad for gamers, it's more than just detrimental because it's counterintuitive downloadable content. My problem is that as a gamer, and as somebody who really likes the Marvel comics, it's stupid to me. I mean, flat out, this seems like a bad idea for the game itself. When you're playing this game, one of the biggest things I believe, and I mean this truly in my heart, one of the things that motivates online gamers is jealousy. But I mean that in a good way. If you lose a fight in an online game, like if you land in Warzone and get absolutely demolished, you get jealous of the fact that a better player beat you. If you're playing an online game and somebody has a big cool mount, they're riding on like a huge horse on fire, you get jealous of the fact that you wish you had that as well. But you know what this does? A good game motivates you to play more. It pushes you to try and improve, to explore, to work together with your friends to try and get that stuff yourself. As soon as you just put a price tag on progression, as soon as you just say, hey, this stuff is only accessible by swiping your credit card, in my opinion, you water down the experience. I've said this before, and I'm saying it again, I truly believe that this game is going to have a lot of problems at launch. I think a lot of people are going to be upset, tons of people are going to be disappointed, and I don't think people are going to be playing long enough to even see Spider-Man when it comes out in 2021, but I guess we're going to see pretty soon. The game releases here in just a couple weeks, and I suppose it'll probably be at least a decent success. If you haven't already, I did put up a big video about my impressions on the game so far, and that's kind of blown up, so I appreciate all the love on that. But <sighs> the more we learn about this game, the more concerned I am about it. But what do you think? Tell me your thoughts in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, share with your friends, and subscribe if you haven't already. But do me the biggest favor of all, and keep dreaming. 
For some reason, people keep sending me this creepy toad with I am a dancer. legs. Is to say a conduit. I, I I don't know. I no, we're not we're not we're not doing that. We're not what whatever this is supposed to be. Don't send me this. Stop stop story. sending me. No, don't don't send me this. Don't send me this. Ugh. Thanks so much for watching that video. If you want to see something else, you can always click this link to see what I put up last or, you know, subscribe and see what's coming up next. Also, I promise that whatever I do, it'll try not to suck.